In this video, I'm gonna be showing you Perplexity AI, which is a platform that accepts natural language as queries, and then it scours the internet for potential information you might need, and then finally responds back with natural language to your query. So as you see here, I asked the question of, give me the top five financial stories today, and very quickly, it gives me both the sources, it gives me the answers, and then it also gives me related follow-up questions to ask based on that information. So the thing that is obviously unique with this is when you compare this to something like Claude or ChatGPT without plugins, it doesn't give you that ability out of the gate to go and scour the internet for sources. And even when you do have something like ChatGPT set up with its web browsing capability, it isn't too refined. And I found it to be more of a struggle than just Googling, to be frank. So this is an implementation that takes that sort of synthesis between querying the web and natural language and leveraging an LLM and does a phenomenal job at it, in my opinion. Now, the thing with this is it does also give you the ability to use GPT-4, but the thing to note with this is the GPT-4 feature and the Copilot feature, which I'll dive into, is something that you'll get a lot more queries with when you do subscribe to the Pro tier. So I am a Pro member of Perplexity, and I will, by the end of the video, do a bit of a comparison between Perplexity AI and ChatGPT Plus, and you can sort of decide on what might potentially be worth the money if you're looking to, to subscribe to one of these. So the next thing to note with Perplexity AI is they did recently release a file upload feature. So I'll just demonstrate that here. So if I go ahead and go over to my downloads here and I just drag over a 10Q from Apple's recent, recently released quarterly report and I just say, how did Apple do this quarter? So as soon as you put in that query, the thing that's remarkable I find with this is the speed at which it processes both PDFs as well as the speed to which it queries the internet and gives you that, that result back. So they've really ironed out something interesting on the back end to make this happen. And they've done, like I said, an amazing job at this. So as you can see here, based on the file, it searched through that and it gave me some relevant details of Apple's report. And I could say, let's just say, what were iPad sales? So the nice thing with this is, if you're a subscriber to this channel, you might have seen us try to build out uh, applications where we query and ask questions of PDFs or pieces of text. And the thing with that is it does require a little bit of setup, right? Whereas this, it just gives you that ability to drag over your file and just quickly chat with it. So it's a different story if you wanna build out something like this for yourself or a company or a product idea you might have. But if you just wanna be able to chat with a PDF or a piece of text, throwing it into something like Perplexity or Claude, uh, which has this feature as well, is a, a really easy way to do that and extract some necessary information that you might need. So the other thing with Perplexity that it offers is it does give you the ability to share your link if you're looking to share your link. And then the nice thing with that shared link is someone else could query and ask follow-up questions based on what you've shared without it actually impacting your first shared uh, results. So uh, it does give you that ability if someone sees it and they, if they have an idea of, okay, what if I ask this follow-up question? It gives you that ability without affecting that uh, first share that you have. So Copilot is a really interesting feature where now, if I just enter a new chat, which you can very easily with just Command K, which makes this really easily just to quickly ask a handful of things, is if I have Copilot on and I say, give me the latest news. So I'll just use some of these similar examples just to demonstrate that sort of real-time information gathering that it has. You see it considers sources like we had, and we just start to see some of the most recent news that is you know, across these different news sources. So the nice thing, as you might imagine, with the, the annotations here, you can have them embedded within the natural language, and then you'll have the responses. 
and you can see it's just going through and giving me information pretty quickly, right? So the next thing that I just wanted to touch on one more time is that command K feature. The one thing I noticed with this when I was playing around with this is you can ask a lot of different questions very quickly. So I could say, tell me about what's new in Langchain. And if I was to say, tell me about what's new with OpenAI. So you can have a number of different threads and it also gives you the ability of say, if you have different tabs open here, you can have those chat histories running in parallel. So it seems subtle, but the difference with this is when you compare it to something like ChatGPT, is if you try to query two things at once, and let's say if I have two tabs open of ChatGPT, if I just duplicate this and I just click some of their uh, questions here and then try to do it in the second tab you get only one message is available at a time so say if you're a power user of this and you want to just quickly query a number of different things and sort of have a dashboard you could imagine you know having a couple of these parallel to one another it doesn't limit you to that uh, that one message at a time and that is also something that I've noticed recently to be a bit of an issue when using ChatGPT is even if I ask it to stop, so let's just turn off code interpreter for a moment, is if I ask it to stop with the button here, and then I, if I just try and ask quickly another question, is it doesn't actually stop. So it sort of runs through the background or at least thinks it's running and you have to give it a few seconds. So I haven't run into those types of bugs with Perplexity AI, which is very, very nice. So another thing to note is you do have the focus uh, state uh, where you can just hone in on, you know, YouTube or Wolfram Alpha or or whatever, you know, with is within here. I don't usually use this. I find just the core offering and the default settings to do what I like it to do really well. And now the other nice thing with this is in the coding context of, say, if you want to reference a new AI library, for instance, and you want to come up with some examples, you could quickly come in here, write a question and have it write you an example and have that recent documentation, right? So another limitation of uh, a lot of LLM implementations is not being able to access those modern libraries. So that's been an interesting use case that I've been playing around with. So just sort of a side note with perplexity, the thing that I that stood out to me when I just took a look at their blog here is they have some really uh, notable investors here. So uh, individuals from, you know, board members of Databricks, uh, you know, the former CEO of GitHub, the former CEO of YouTube. And then there's also some angel investors and most notably that I noticed were, you know, the CEO of Replit as well as Andre Karpathy, who's worked on Tesla Autopilot as well as the core offering of um, the GPT models at OpenAI as well. So a huge amount of people have clearly put their support behind Perplexity and I can really see why just being a user of it uh, over the past week or so. So a bit of a housekeeping thing is right now uh, at time of release of the video, there is a quote unquote first birthday celebration where you can get a discount of 25% if you subscribe to one uh, year of service. So that will bring this $200 down to 150. So if you are uh, committed to using this for the year, I jump on that. If not, I'll see if I can put a referral link in the description where I think you'll be able to get at least something like $10 off for your first month. So a couple other things to note is you do have history like I quickly showed here. Uh, you are able to search your threads, which is something that I wish ChatGPT had that ability uh, within their web interface to search. Uh, that document feature is great where you can upload and query like I demonstrated. The one notable difference is when you compare the upload feature to something like Claude, it doesn't allow you to upload more than one file right now. So that was something that uh, Claude supports where you can upload up to five files. So if you want to compare, say, different filing types like I did in this one example, you wouldn't be able to uh, do that example like I showed in my Claude 2 demonstration. 
So I've become a pro subscriber. I intend to continue to subscribe uh, past the free trial. There is also a free trial that you can try on the pro tier of if you want to explore their co-pilot feature. Now the co-pilot feature, I won't dive into it too much here. I just encourage you to get going and try this out. Sign up, make an account. Really simple to start playing around with it. Now the co-pilot feature gives you follow-up questions where it will say, Say if you want to write an article, it might say, okay, what do you want that article to be about? What do you want the title to be? So it sort of acts as a bit of an assistant almost, where it gives you that back and forth of refining your prompts a little bit. So a really great feature um, and just overall very impressed with Perplexity AI. I really encourage you, especially if you are a ChatGPT Plus member to consider looking at this as an option as well. I think a lot of people will find just that synthesis of real-time data with natural language to be incredibly useful. So as always, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and otherwise, until the next one.